Happy Monday, <sighs> April 29th, Hebrews 7, 11 to 28. It's a very long passage. Now, if perfection came through the Levitical priesthood, for on the basis of it, the people received the law, what further need was there for another priest to appear? Said to be according to the order of Melchizedek and not according to the order of Aaron. For when there is a change of the priesthood, there must be a change of the law as well. For the one these things are spoken about belong to a different tribe. Uh, no one from that different tribe has served at the altar. Now it is evident that our Lord came from Judah, and Moses said nothing about that tribe concerning priests. And this becomes clearer if another priest like Melchizedek appears who did not become a priest based on a legal regulation about physical descent, but based on the power of an indestructible life. For it has been testified you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So the previous command is annulled because it was weak and unprofitable for the law perfected nothing but a better hope is introduced through which we draw near to God. None of this happened without an oath, for others became priests without an oath. But he became a priest with an oath made by the one who said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind, you are a priest forever. Because of this oath, Jesus has also become the guarantee of a better covenant. Now, many have become Levitical priests since they are prevented by death from remaining in office forever, meaning they die. But because he remains forever, he holds his priesthood permanently. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, since he always lives to intercede for them. For this is the kind of high priest we need, holy innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He doesn't need to offer sacrifices every day as high priests do, first for their own sins, then for those of the people. He did this once for all time when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who are weak, but the promise of the oath which came after the law appoints a son who has been perfected forever. All right, long passage, but Jesus is the highest priest. For the rest of this week, I'm going to break this passage into parts because it is so long. We are still discussing the priesthood of Jesus, and he is indeed the highest priest. And however, I'm wondering why I need a priest. I mean, to be honest, I grew up very Baptist. <laughs> we didn't have priests. We actually reacted strongly at the suggestion of priests. There's a different tradition of faith. Uh, it's against this backdrop that we need to understand the need for Jesus as priest. Uh, much of the book of Hebrews and this section especially emphasizes the importance of Jesus' priesthood. And I believe our understanding should be that Jesus is the once for all time priest, high priest, highest priest. See you tomorrow.